Now, for anyone who may be asking themselves, why would I listen to you for deadlift advice? Well, I have pulled 410 kilograms, 903 pounds, conventional, raw, no suit. You'll notice that when I go to stand up, my knees stay out against my hands, okay? When I go to push, they're not going in here, like this, okay? We don't want that. We want to slightly externally rotate from the hip, push our knee very gently into our forearm, not so much that it bends our arm, And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. It is deadlift day, and today I'm taking you on a deadlift walkthrough. Now that's kind of like a tutorial, but I think it's a little better. I think it's a little easier to digest the information, you know, compared to your basic deadlift checkpoint list. Each set, I'm gonna kind of talk you through a different phase of the lift, and that's something you can think about and perhaps apply to your own deadlifts, so you too can have a monster deadlift. Now I pull 410 kilograms, conventional you know I have goals you know of helping other people pull those numbers as well that's why I do this that's why I give you this free content because I'm here to fucking help I want you motherfuckers to be strong as shit and uh, if you hang around until after that there's a cheeky surprise on there for you you might like it you might not I don't care either way it's there waiting for you so I do hope you enjoy this I'm gonna get after it now let's go baby all right guys, so the plan for today's deadlifts, nothing crazy heavy, I don't think. We're just gonna do a bit of volume. Uh, I'm back to the floor with no deficit. Now it's been a while since I've done just regular deadlifts. So definitely focusing heavily on technique today. You know, finding that flow, finding that groove, that position, that's definitely, you know, key for today. Uh, and you know what, I might do a bit of sumo after. Feeling a bit confused. We might fuck around and find out if I end up liking dudes after I do it. We'll see. I doubt it. But uh, we'll have a bit of fun. You know, why not? This is kind of that week where I'm recovering with my back, so I'm not gonna go too crazy. But uh, I definitely wanted to use this opportunity to break down my technique for you. Uh, a tutorial of sorts on how to deadlift, but not just a checklist. I'll talk you through it as I go uh, and give you my thoughts. You know, what I'm trying to achieve, the purpose, and why I'm doing it that way. Uh, and if I was successful with that or not. So we'll get cracking into this now. 70 on the bar, I'll do two sets. The first set, um, not moving explosively, nice and easy, just getting the, uh, the motor pattern set. So I'll just do five reps here. Easy peasy. All right guys, so second set at 70, a bit more intent in the bar this time, I'll move it a bit faster, but something I'll touch on quickly before I get started with that is little details are important, especially when you wanna be fucking good at something, okay? When you wanna have a massive deadlift, you've also gotta pay attention to the little things. So for me, I make sure the bar is set up in the middle of the platform. When there's lines on the platform and the bar is off center, it sometimes fucks me up a little bit because I'm looking down and it doesn't feel even. It may sound silly, but some of you probably get that shit, okay? So if that's important to you or it throws you off or something, make sure it's set up perfectly so there's no fucking excuse. Now, as I'm approaching the bar and the bar is exactly where I want it, I think about you know the routine or the ritual that I'm going through every single time I set up to do a deadlift. My feet go into the same spot, my hands go into the bar on the same place, and then I do exactly the same thing every single time, meaning I'll have a breath, take the slack out of the bar, drop my hips and go, okay? I replicate it or as close to it as possible every single time so I can achieve the best results every single time. The moment you start fucking around and doing different shit, that's when bad shit happens. So as you see here, my second set, 
I'm going to approach the bar hip width with my stance. No need to be any wider than that. My hands will be just outside of my legs. I'll drop my hips, take the slack, and go. Whew. Okay, five reps, a bit more intent. Easy peasy. Five reps. I'll go 120 next, chuck another plate on, and uh, we'll keep chatting. We'll keep chatting. Let's go. Okay, so 120 kilos on the bar. Now for anyone who may be asking themselves, why would I listen to you for deadlift advice? Well, I have pulled 410 kilograms, 903 pounds, conventional, raw, no suit, there is that, and I'm not a deadlift only guy. My total is 1,050 kilograms, 415 kilo squat, 252 and a half kilo bench in competition, 260 in the gym, and 410 kilo deadlift. So I know something about something. So I definitely hope you can learn something from me. That's why I'm doing this. Now, as the weights start going up, with my training, something else important for you guys is intent of warm-ups. Now, I move the bar with as much speed as I possibly can. And a lot of people always ask, why does the bar go away from you? Why are you humping the bar? Well, I'm not humping the bar. I'm moving up with such speed that the connection with the bar and my hips pushes the bar away. Now, as the weights get heavier, it slows down, obviously, that doesn't happen. But why do I do this? For me, how it works for me when I'm warming up, the faster the weight moves, the better I feel. The more confidence that gives me for my heavy sets. You know, so when I'm moving the bar with optimal speed, with optimal technique, you know, the end result is generally pretty fucking good. Now, what I'm saying is though, also, if you haven't got optimal technique, don't go doing it as fast as you can. That'll make it worse. We need to have good technique first, and then we apply the speed or the power. So, you know, don't go into the gym and start fucking throwing your deadlifts around. Technique first, be comfortable with the technique. As you become more competent and you master that, start applying more speed and more intent into your deadlifts. You don't have to just start by going, bah! like I do, start moving a little faster in your warm-ups. And I definitely believe if you can do that, when it's heavy, you can actually learn to apply more power to the bar so you can move more weight. That is my theory, and in my practice, that's what I have discovered. So, food for thought. I'll do a few reps here now, and we'll move on. Let's go, baby. 120 kilos. Feels good. 170 next. Let's go. Okay, so 170 kilos on the bar. Um, I'm going to start doing three reps at a time. Normally I would do singles, but as I said, I hurt myself last week and I want to get a bit of volume in. So if I do three reps instead of one rep for these next couple of warm ups, that's three times the volume already. It's as simple as that sometimes. So I'm going to go and do that and also gives you, I guess, more opportunity to see what I'm doing. <clears throat> now, something for you to pay attention to with this set. Now, when I get into position, my hands on the barbell, my hips drop down, and I'm ready to go, although it's a quick transition, you'll notice that when I go to stand up, my knees stay out against my hands, okay? When I go to push, they're not going in here, like this. 
Okay, we don't want that. We want to slightly externally rotate from the hip, push our knee very gently into our forearm, not so much that it bends our arm, but so we've got contact and push and maintain contact. Okay, now if you can do that, you're gonna maintain stability because with that external rotation, you're now using your hips, your glutes, your posterior chain effectively. When that doesn't happen, your knees come in, posterior chain's off. So it's gonna be shitty on your lower back and your knees. So pay attention to that. Although it's fast, you'll see my other sets as well, what I'm doing. So I'll do three reps here now. I've got the equipment on, belt and straps, because my next comp, I can wear belts, I can wear straps. So we're gonna practice for how we play. Easy, baby. Just how we like it. All right, so 220 kilos on the bar, four plates, next warm up. Gonna do another three reps here now. I've got the camera a bit more side on because this time I want you to see, I guess, my knee travel. That's what they call it. So there's a lot of people that say that when you deadlift, you need to have straight shins. Okay, so meaning they need to stay straight the entire time. To me, it doesn't make sense because you cannot push when your shins are straight. Okay, we have to be able to push our knees slightly forward over the barbell to create leg drive where we push like a leg press. Okay, because the deadlift to me is a push and a pull. Now, when I do pause deadlifts, you've probably seen, it's broken down to two points. So it's Push, pause here, and then I think about pulling my hips through. Boom, it's a push-pull. Now, a straight-legged deadlift for me, or straight shins, that's good if you want to do a stiff-legged deadlift because you're trying to take the leg drive out. But if you're having, or if you're in that position for a regular conventional deadlift, I think you're missing out on, on some serious kilos. So, you know, don't be afraid to let your knees travel over the bar. You know, they don't go over my toes per se, but they're still traveling forward over the bar. So pay attention to that here maybe, and uh, see how it goes for you. Three reps, 220. Strapped in, my feet are hip width apart. Okay, I'm gonna drop my hips, take the slack out of the bar, drive my knees slightly out. As you can see here, my knees are over the bar. Okay, I'm not back here, I'm over the bar. Easy. Moving on. Okay, 270 kilos on the bar. Now, I may not go heavier than this. I may just do a few reps of this weight, maybe a few sets. See how the back feels. Um, again, today, emphasis is not on the weight in the bar. It's just getting some movement in, getting some blood back into my back, and uh, obviously demonstrating, you know, some, some deadlifts for you, explaining the technique so it can hopefully help you guys get a fucking 400 kilo deadlift too. Why not? Why the fuck not? All right, baby, I'm gonna hit this now. Talk in a sec.
Nice. Again, it's not moving overly fast, but I'm not putting 100% intent to the barbell today. Technique, back feels okay. And when I start putting intent into the bar, that's where I may have issues because I cannot afford any technical breakdown with my back at the moment. So hopefully that makes sense. But uh, I'll do another set here. Yeah, feels all right. All right, so I lied. I put another 10 kilos on the bar, 280, nothing crazy. Do another few reps, see how it feels. Um, this one said I want you to you know, pay attention to, I guess I like to call it being long, okay? I don't mean your penis, it's a bonus if it's long, but your leverages. I like to think about lengthening yourself as much as you can, right? So to get into the best position possible, to get the best leverage possible, we need to think about you know, exactly what we're trying to do. So, you know, when my hands are on the barbell and you know, I'm taking the slack out of the bar I'm about to go, my arms are as long as they can be. I'm using that bar to lengthen everything. I'm pulling away from it, uh, essentially lengthening my arms because the you know, longer your arms and the, the higher up, I guess, your chest is, you can pull yourself kind of into like that kind of a position, you know, the shorter the range of motion, and you're starting from a more favorable position. Because think about it, if you're not doing that, you're more bent over the bar. So that's not a favorable position at all. We're not gonna be as strong here as we would be from up here. We're actually moving less distance. So just think about that too, okay? It's very important, positioning is important. And I like to think about it like a still photograph before I do it. What do I want it to look like? You know, interesting, but see how this goes. Pieces, baby. Feels good. Feels good. Hopefully that made sense for you. Moving on. All right, so fuck it. I put 300 on the bar. Now I can't hold myself. I may as well give myself a little bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna add a little pause in there as well. Fuck it, right? It's going well so far. Let's fuck around. But I do have to switch on for this. This was gonna require some intensity. Ooh. Let's go, baby. 300 kilos. Come on. Come on. Easy, baby. I felt pretty good. You know, I'm not moving with 100% intent. I'm not 100%, but that's okay. 300, three reps paused after doing a bunch of triples. Can I complain? No, I can't. No, I can't, but now I'm gonna get weird. I'm gonna get real weird. I'm sorry, guys, but I have a confession to make. I think I'm confused because I'm gonna do some sumo. Just gotta find my butt plug. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start with 170. I'm already warm. Now, keep in mind, I don't have the leverages or the hips for a sumo deadlift. So I'm gonna go pretty close with my stance. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to maximize uh, the cheater advantage that I can get from doing sumo, like some people can, but you know, maybe I'm just, you know, confused, not like full on into guys. 
Um, but that's okay, guys, it's not a problem. <laughs> just saying. I'm just fucking around. So, 170, do a couple reps, see how I feel. Now, I'm not really good at sumo, so don't fucking copy my shit. Disclaimer. Ooh. Now, so far I'm not craving uh, a penis, so we'll go up and wait, and fingers crossed, I'll still be straight. Let's go. All right, so 220 on the bar. I'm just gonna do singles from here. I kind of just wanna see, you know, how easy it is or hard it is compared to the conventional that I just did, you know, based on how I feel today. Uh, I've only done sumo once before. I did it for six weeks because I hurt my back and I had a comp coming up. And, you know, I got within about 10 or 15 kilos of my conventional max in six weeks with sumo. So it didn't take very long. And I dare say, you know, another month I would have gone past my conventional max. So going off that, this is definitely a cheater's lift. It is what it is. It's easier to lift more weight. Um, but, I don't know, something dirty about it. It's just not a conventional deadlift. I don't know, something about picking a fucking bar up off the ground like a man. <laughs> just does it for me. That's probably gay in itself. So, it's a catch-22 situation. Fuck, I didn't realise that. What a stitch-up. Anyway, crack into this now, baby. 220. We'll fucking, uh, I reckon we'll smoke this shit. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Let's spread this taint. Gotta spread the taint. Sumo style. There's one thing I definitely remember from sumo is that I definitely got dizzy after I did every rep. I don't know why. Conventional, I don't. Sumo, I do. So if I go down after the rep, that's why. So I don't fall over and split my head open. But that felt easy. Felt really easy. Chuck a, another plate on. We'll go 270. Bing, bang, boom, baby. I'm gonna expose you sumo motherfuckers out there. And I'm getting exposed too, I guess. All right, 270 on the bar. Now, as I said, still feeling pretty good. Um, you know, I'm maybe, you know, maybe curious. Maybe my, uh, my closer sumo stance is maybe why I haven't developed the gay voice yet. And I'm still not craving, uh, you know, any, any of that stuff. So, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's that. Probably that, we'll put it down to that. Anyway, 270 now, baby. I'm gonna smoke this, hopefully this fucking flies. And then we'll go up again and prove myself right, which is always nice. fucking easy dude I probably conventional that a little bit I didn't squeeze into it enough but it's easy even if I did it shit so we'll go 300 the same weight that I did today for conventional see 
how that moves, pay a bit more attention to my technique on the next one. Not that it's good, but there's definitely a few things I can tidy up. All right, 300 kilos on the bar. Now I'm a little nervous for this one. You know, I'm a little concerned that something may happen if I pull 300 sumo. Maybe this is, you know, the, <laughs> the one that broke the fucking camel's back. I don't know, we'll see. Broke back mountain that is. Come on, baby. I mean, it's a little slow, but it's pretty fucking easy, man. I was only really trying to squeeze that off the ground. So, is sumo easier? Hmm. Probably, in terms of if you wanna lift more weight, I'm sure if I worked on this, fucking it would be more than 410 kilos, but I wanna pull 420 conventional, I look like a man. So, it is what it is. But that was fun. I won't be doing that again. A little experiment. But I'm gonna do a few accessories now. And just to finish off, uh, after those deadlifts, uh, something I've been adding to my training is on alternating days, I'm doing suitcase carries and then a yoke walk the next day, but not heavy, not for weight, it's a bit of conditioning, and more so to bulletproof myself. So, you know, the length of this driveway is about, I'd say it's around 60 or 70 meters, which is about 100 yards, maybe a little less, maybe 90 yards or so. Um, and I walk up and back, that's one set. And I do it at least five times a day. So today it's suitcase carries, 30 kilos a hand, nothing crazy, but it's up with one hand, back with the other, five times. And in between that, I'm doing hamstring curls. So, Suitcase carriers are one-handed deadlift, essentially. Doing it with a farmer's carry, you know. And the goal here is for stabilization, to minimize lateral movement through my hips. So side to side movement, minimize that. Keep everything nice and strong through the core, through the hips. And this is to bulletproof, you know, my lower back, which has been an issue for me lately. And I was neglecting this extra work that I need to be doing because when you're lifting crazy weight you got to do a crazy amount of supportive work you know for everything else in your body it's one side so yeah can't be neglecting this shit apologies for the light out here it's pretty crazy but I just wanted to show you what else I'm doing I won't film all these sets I'm just talking you through the first one and when I put this down, I'll do a set of hamstring kills. Five sets total. And that's my session. Nothing crazy, but definitely gonna be working on in my conditioning, work capacity, and bulletproofing my body so I can smoke this 420. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Time to go back inside. These hamstring kills and repeat you know what's up and that's the session done guys now obviously hurt my back a little bit last week so i pulled the uh pulled the weight back a little bit this week to focus on technique and i wasn't moving at 100 percent speed you know i'm not at 100 percent. my back is probably at about 70 percent, so i wasn't going to push it too much got a little cheeky with the pauses there but at the end of the day 300 kilos is a comfortable number for me and i'm happy that even on a day where I really don't feel that great, my back is a bit sore, you know, my back doesn't feel strong, it feels a little, you know, when it feels a little unstable, we saw the pain, um, yeah, the bracing wasn't there, so I had to really focus on that, so, you know, with all those things considered, I'm happy that I can do 300 for a pause, for three pauses, uh, any given day, really, uh, and then I backed it up with some sumo, because I wanted to see if 
you know, I'd like men after that, you know, it's a dangerous game to play because what if I did? I'd be fucked by now. But fortunately, I'm still straight. I am wondering if it's because of the narrow stance that I used. It might be. Maybe I didn't open my taint enough. Uh, I didn't lose, you know, that virginity. I didn't get that cherry popped. So I'm hoping that's the case. I hope I don't wake up tomorrow um, with different feelings. Uh, but so far, I still like women, and tits are great. Uh, tits are the best. I like ass too, lady ass, obviously, not man ass. I had to distinguish there because she might have been a little bit concerned. But never fear. But if you like dudes' butts, well, hey, that's cool. You do you, man. I am uh, not here to judge you. I'm not here to judge. I do hope that you learned something today, you know, with the deadlift tutorial. You know, I'm, as I said, I'm here to help. Uh, I want you to get the fucking gains. You know, I'm on that road to 420 kilos at the moment. I am about nine weeks out of competition. Um, yeah, and next day of this session, I've got a guest coming uh, who will be competing here at Heavy Lies the Crown at Temple. That's the comp that I'm doing. He's another invited lifter, a uh, young guy up and coming, very strong. So he'll be here to do a session with me next week for YouTube. We should be good and hopefully I'm back closer to 100%. So I can uh, hopefully pull some good numbers. But yeah, it was a good day. It's very hot. I'm gonna get some food now and uh, I'll be back tomorrow to make some more content for you guys. But until next time, you better get your ass to the fucking gym.